Welcome everyone. Tonight I want to talk to you about my latest reward function using a continuous action space that basically will put me in the top 15 in the open division right now. So uh, as you see uh, right now, I'm showing you my model as it's racing around the track. This is the August open division track. And uh, let me let me show you what I did. So you're probably wondering you know what kind of model this was so it is a continuous action space model i trained it locally on my computer i uploaded it to aws i use eight workers to build this quickly and as you can see here it's uh this graph looks a little strange perhaps uh, again because i'm using eight workers the amazon uh, parser log parser doesn't I guess can't really handle that. So it's just getting probably one of the eight workers logs. So here you can see that um, this is a well-behaving function, meaning that the reward keeps increasing monotonically. Um, and completions, lap completions, basically on the valuation at 80 for a long time and basically max out at 100%. So this is, a, again, a well-behaving uh, function. Now, what do you care about? You probably wondering about the model itself, right? So I want to talk about the reward function in a minute, but for now, I wanted to focus on the action space. So look at my action space. I'm going 30, negative 30 degrees to positive 30 degrees because there are some hairpin turns in this track. And look at my space. For now, I used to keep it simple. My speed, uh, excuse me, the speed search space is only from 1.4 to 1.5 meters a second, right? So kept it small on purpose, right? We want to keep this small so that it can, the model can converge quickly. If you make it too large, it's going to try every single possible combination of speed and angle. Remember, this is continuous, so it's going to be trying... 29 degrees and 29.005 degrees and 29.00001 degrees. This is going to take a while to converge, right? The other thing I wanted to highlight in my discount factor, I know people have been asking me about this. So here you go. I'm using 98.5 as a discount factor and a slightly more aggressive learning rate here. Um, does this really make a difference? Uh, perhaps um, it might help, uh, but you know, uh, I think the discount factor is the one that makes the greatest difference. Now, I've talked about how to pick a discount factor in prior videos. So please go through my playlist and see, um, check it out. The other thing I want to mention is these hyperparameters are different from what's allowed in the student and in the student league. So, um, you know, these hyperparameters are a little different. So if you want me to try this model, using what the student league does please leave me a comment that's the only way i know that you guys want to see that stuff all right so this is the model you saw how it's well according to this anyway it's well behaved so let's look at uh let's look at the leaderboard right so i created a a i created a uh community race you guys are all welcome to check it out i will include a link in the description so go ahead and click on that um it's free so if you train your model you can subscribe to it and it'll be the free race and check this out i got a minute and 19 seconds right on the august open and you saw this video in the beginning and as you can see it uh, may not be the fastest car but it's consistent uh, or it tries to be consistent. It seems it's following a center line type of uh, strategy here. And I tried to keep it from um, steering, you know, left and right, left and right. Like I try to minimize the variance in the steering. I'll talk about that in a second. Because it's consistent, it's, uh, it's pretty decently fast, right, on average. So, yes, you can create an action space that technically can go faster, but on average, this car is pretty decent. All right, so as I mentioned, this was a minute 19. Let's look at the official open division. Uh, let's look at the leaderboard. 
and that's oh, it's gonna take a little bit of time to load up. So you just bear with me while this loads up. Okay, it finished loading up. So I mentioned it was a minute 19. Let's take a look. A minute 19 would basically put you between JPMC and Secure Zone. So we're talking top 15, right? Uh, and it's just a there's only one day left before the competition closes. So comfortably top 15 with a very straightforward, continuous uh, action space model. So I have to admit, this is my first continuous action space model that I've built. Uh, it turned out better than I thought. So let's go into the details of how this works. All right. So here is at the highest, at the simplest level, what the reward function looks like, right? So I broke it down into two things. One, I was thinking to myself, I want to have a steering reward, right? And you can follow any strategy here. I'm following, uh, follow the center line. You could follow, you could do a waypoint type strategy, but the idea is I want to, I want to reward the car for steering in the right direction uh, according to the strategy. But then I have a separate function for consistent steering, right? So I don't want it to go from negative 30 degrees to 30 degrees, right? I mean, it's basically steering left, right, left, right, left, right. That's not going to be very useful. I wanted to, I wanted to steer continuously or consistently at, let's say, negative two degrees for over a period of time to do a nice long left turn, right? Or right turn. So, you know, this is what I want to reward. So somehow we need to combine these two functions, f of x and g of y, right? So we, we ultimately want to have a line that says reward is some function h that takes as inputs f of x and g of y. So question is, okay, how do we combine these two? Now, I'm going to assume that these two functions are, have been normalized, right, to some number range, let's say between uh, zero and one or negative one to one just to make the math easier right all right so i like this website called geogebra and this is where we're going to combine our two functions right so let's say i have a f of x f you know i can create a, a cool function where let's say it's add these two functions x and y as you can see this is not really the shape that i want right i wanted to basically get uh, like an interactive term between these two. So I want to get the interaction, right? I want it both to be good for X and good for Y, meaning I need to have, I want to reward it when both the steering direction and the consistent steering are both good. So we do that by doing, you can do X, X times Y, but again, this is not the right shape. This is not what we want. Okay, so this isn't quite the shape that we want. So let's do something different, right? I want something that's looks something like this. So f of x squared. Let's just put this square up here. Minus five. Okay. Second. Right? Check this out. How cool is that? So this is saying well, we need to raise this, right? The Z is going to be our output value, right? The Z will be the final model score. So let's let's actually add five to this. And now you can see, uh, let me rotate this. This is so cool. Let's rotate this. So, so let's say your steering, your steering um, bonus is high uh actually hold on a second if if both the steering and the consistency reward functions are zero then you can you arrive at this peak according to this function right so again if you've normalized if you've normalized these two functions f of x and g of y to output a value between negative one and one then this function right here will be pretty awesome, right? And you feed it into this function. And now when both are at the optimal position of value of zero, you get the maximum combined value, right? And you can see how it, how it um, 
will you know kind of change uh, depending on um, some combination right so this is one way this is how i basically combined these two sub rewards into one uh total value so to speak so again you have to figure out how you want to define your um your steering reward and your consistency and this, this could be anything else it could be speed maybe you want to have reward speed right and you can combine these two uh method these two rewards in this way right so anyway this is a quick uh quick uh uh, crash course on how I did it. Again, there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, I'm going to provide the link in the description below for the community race. Please go ahead and click on it and like and subscribe. Leave comments if you want to have get more details about the, the method here, or if you you know just have general questions. You know, leaving a comment shows me that uh, what you know just lets me know what you're interested in. All right, well, good luck out there. Good luck to all the student racers and uh, see you out there on the track. There you have it, folks, Team Boltron. Stay tuned for more. Make sure to subscribe and click the like button if you want to see more of this content.